so to finish the hand up, I'm going to start by just double checking the thumb here, which looks pretty good. And I can just have a look at the weight map on the underside of the hand. So I'm going to take the palm bone and just kind of clean up some of the weight around here. And if I look on the underside of the palm, that's better there, I can see that the weight map loses a bit of influence in the palm right around the pinky. So I'm just going to kind of add that back into the first palm bone. Add all this back in. And then I'll add one line. Let's see, get around here. Oops. I have to make that brush a little bit smaller sometimes when you get into these tight areas. Add a line of this uh, second bone right here. So D. I'll pick this deformer and just hit every point on this line. I'm not going to uh, use these two lines here, I don't think. Well, I could block it in for now and then see how that goes later. Make that a little larger there. bring that around to the underside of the palm. When it comes to the fingers, one of the best ways of weighting fingers quickly, and you can see some of the problems I have here, Actually, it's not so bad in the other fingers. Really it just, just seems to be here. Uh, so we can actually just do a little trick um, if you ever have problematic fingers, sometimes just grab all the points at the tip of the finger and grow the selection out. And this is if you're, all your finger weighting is really bad. This is not so bad at all, so I don't really need to do this, but I'll just sort of demonstrate what I do. I just go up each finger and I grow the selection all the way to the, uh, the tip of the finger, and I reassign all of the points to the first bone. And then I right click, and then I reselect those points, uh, or I guess you could even use the the shift minus key or the, the select shrink selection tool and I'll just shrink that selection to the knuckle. Again you can see here that uh, the knuckle line should have an edge bisecting it so I'll use the add edge tool, split edge tool, the close bracket and I'll control middle click to add an edge at 50% then I'll go to the ring finger second digit on the right side and I'll just add that in can tag the points and hit F to frame in there. And there's the ring finger second digit, so add another edge loop, control, middle click there. And if we look in our operator stack, we have two split edge operators that I will freeze history on. If I come back into my ring finger now, let's just get a good viewing plane, I'll just grow selection right up until that knuckle line there. And now I'll reassign local to the next digit down. I'll just grab the tip again and grow selection. It looks like I could also use another edge loop here as well. Another trick you can use is if you don't want your edges uh, at 50%, this way I might actually pack an edge uh, closer to this edge, so not directly at 50% here is to actually just add it on both digits at 50%. And if we access the split edge operators, so I'll access the first one, pin it closed, access the second one, pin it closed, we can now just work with the 
uh, ratio edge. I can actually move this to about 80%. And if I look on the other side, I can set that one to 80% as well. So we end up with our edges in the exact same location. And again, I can just freeze the modeling stack. If I select that bone and focus in on it, uh, it doesn't actually uh, rotate any points because all the points are still weighted to this uh, second bone on the ring finger. So I'll take the remaining points here, uh, perhaps subtract these points, and local reassign to the end. If I select the bone now, we get a slightly better bend, a better uh, better deformation anyways. Can test that out. And we'll test this finger out here. So there are still a few points, it looks like, in here that are going to need to be blended in as well. And if I just have a look here, seems to work out. Right here we could definitely use an extra edge loop. So I'll select control middle click and drop one in. That's on the pinky finger between the second and third digits. Just focus in there. check. If I access the split edge operator, yeah, so it is between the second and third digits, and there we go. Focus in, and drop in that edge loop right here at 50%. Just had a problem sort of uh, visualizing where that edge loop was placed. So all's good. Let's grab my selection again and keep working the rest of the fingers. So if I look at this um, point here, I don't really have much of a choice. I have to take these points and add them either here or here so that the deformation looks a little bit worse than it really is. Uh, until we actually blend. I work on the other two digits. We have the same problem, but the deformation looks pretty nice. Uh, I'm probably going to put a supporting edge here. So on the middle finger between the first and second knuckle, just control middle click to drop an edge loop in there. And do the same thing on the other side. the middle finger you can also see between the second and third digit we can do the same thing. Right there. Focus in on the bone and let's see how those deformations work. Very nice. Finally the last uh, bone in the finger, the index. Get a good looking deformation. It's not affecting anything into the palm. Looks like we could again use one more edge loop at the uh, first and second bone of the index finger. Control middle click to drop in an edge loop. Uh, and also between the second and third digit. So we'll do the same thing on the other side here. middle click and control middle click using the split edge tool. I'm even thinking 
no, actually, no, this will work just fine. I was thinking about adding on the pinky finger uh, another edge, but again, this just needs to be smoothed. Uh, and also, I can mirror the weights across now. I don't believe there's anything pulling incorrectly in the fingers now. They should be weighted properly. So that looks nice. I'll re uh, rest pose the character, and we'll just mirror all these weights over to the other side now. Grab the points, and mirror weights. I'm now going to just lock all the weights on the entire upper torso. Again, we'll just add a little for overlap. If I hold down Control and Shift at the same time while I'm, point, I'm in point mode, I can deselect um, some extra points. Again, I want to have a little bit of overlap in the area I'm working on, uh, so I'm just deselecting some points up to the uh, lowest uh, stomach deformer. I'm going to jump into the weight editor or Control E, and I'll just again lock those weights. So the upper torso is completely done now, at least rough weighted, and I can focus on the lower body.